one love, one aim, one destiny. Hiya, I them say more. Every pass it them a shout out more. And the dance floor, I them a ball out more. And the dance. Part two, my life on the run. My life as an illegal alien. My life as a stress monster. So in part one, I told you about crossing the border and the road check and the police shakedown. And now we proceed on the way. So from Popajan to Kali, it's about, as I recall, I've, been, I've done that route so many times. I think it's about four hours. Maybe it's less. So I get to Kali. In Kali, I'm really stressed. I'm really stressed out. So I decide I'm just going to get a hotel room, my favorite hotel room, with a jacuzzi, and stay for the night. Now, I told you in the last one, my wallet was emptied out. You never carry all your money in your wallet. And so, of course, I didn't. And I didn't have a huge amount in that wallet. Thank God. So, I'm at the hotel. And I drag my bags up. And I get in the jacuzzi. And I'm just trying to chill. I'm going to leave first thing in the morning. So, I had a nice night. I ordered in Japanese. It was amazing. I then get up in the morning, have the free breakfast, quite good, good coffee with a little chocolate in it, nice orange juice, some fruit, and I head on my way. I get to the terminal and I decide I'm going to try to take one of these small executive express little vans. They have different kinds of things that you can take. And I've always avoided these because I thought they're probably expensive. And why waste the money? Well, there was one that I was told that um, it's called Flota Ospina. And they said that it's a direct drive from Cali to Manizales. Now, on the buses that I would normally take, there's a stop in Pereira. By the time you get to Manizales, it's about six hours, five and a half, six hours. I get in this little van. It's a little Kia van. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six plus a driver. So I get in. Really comfortable. And they manage to get my suitcases in the back. And we go. One of the advantages of that little van is the normal road checks. We got waved through where the other buses, the other transport, the little busetas, they're getting stopped. We got waved through. We got waved through. So there was a road check leaving Cali. We got waved through. There was a road check in Palmyra which is an hour outside of Cali, and we got waved through. It looked like they were gonna check us out, but he waved us through. Then we got to, then we got to Cartago, which is just before you get to Pereira, and there's a road check, and we get pulled over to the side, and the cop comes up and he asks for the papers. He's asking for the papers for the driver, and he didn't care about the passengers. And you know, I'm scrunched down in the seat, trying to, you know. So he harasses the driver for a few minutes, about five minutes, and then we're on our way. I tell you, I'm having a heart attack constantly. So we're going up the hill, the mountain, to Manizales. And we go by a couple road checks, but we're way through. We're way through. No more road checks. So I get to Manizales. I get rid of the suitcase. Worry number one, taken care of. Suitcases have a home. Oh my God. Sigh of relief. The 
next day, I'm headed to Bogota. Why Bogota? I'm going to get a new passport so I can fix all of this. So if I can just get to Bogota, right? So I go down to the terminal, I get on. Now, now I have a plastic copy of my Ecuador cedula. It's not very good. And you can tell it's a, a copy. But I figure something is better than nothing. And when you get buses in Colombia, you usually have to show some kind of ID. And so I used that and it worked. And so I'm on the bus and I'm going to Bogota. And I did a video about that trip. I get to the embassy, I get a hotel. Check out booking.com by the way. I get to the hotel and the next morning, I get my photo, I go to the embassy, I've got an appointment, you can do that online. I get in there and you go up to a window and you give all your information and you already um, turned some of it in online. So you guys got everything, he tells me, sit down, they'll call me, I go to the cashier and I pay such and such money. So I go to the cashier, I pay for the passport and I pay for the shipping. And I go sit down, they tell me, wait till they call me for questioning. So I wait for maybe 10, 15 minutes and I get a call to this window for this lady who's got lots of questions. When did you lose your passport? How did you lose it? Why did you lose it? Have you ever lost one before? Uh, yeah, sort of. I had one destroyed before. Really? The eyebrows go up. So that's two replacement passports. So we go through this, but she was really nice. And I just told her the truth about what I had done. That I had crossed, I don't have entry stamps, and much, what's your plan? What are you gonna do? I said, well, my plan is I'm gonna try to get back to the border, go back across Ecuador, because there's no record of me ever leaving Ecuador or entering Colombia, and get an exit stamp and then walk across to Colombia, get an entry stamp, and there's a reset. And she said, that's actually a pretty good plan. She says, here's your alternative. You can go, while you're in Bogota, you can go to the Colombian migration office and turn yourself in, and they'll give you documents, but you will pay a hefty fine. Now, I don't know what that hefty fine is. I believe it's around $800, but I'm not sure on that. It could be 400. You can look it up. I didn't want to look, I just cried. And so I can't do that. I really, I just can't afford to do that. So, and then she said, option two is when you're not in Bogota, if you get pulled over in one of these road checks, they have the right, and I guess they're supposed to, take you to the border, drop you off, and you can't re-enter Colombia for five years. And that's not gonna work for me. So now, where do you think my stress level is? So we get up through all that, she approves the thing and says you get your passport in about 14 days. Well, it was delivered to my apartment in Manizales in 10 days. I blew me away. Got my passport in hand. Now it's time, with no entry or exit stamps, it's time to go back to the border. And we're gonna pick this up in part three, the last part of this story. Hope you're enjoying it. Please stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Seriously, I, I'm really not a criminal. It was a bad situation. Also, if you have a mind to, uh, if you want to support this channel, feel free to uh, go to the Patreon account. There's links below in the comment section. Uh, there's a GoFundMe page. You know, feel free. Greatly appreciated. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. 
On to part three. <laughs>